All right, the long-awaited tackle video. Welcome back to Twins Reviews, guys. My name is Zmax, and in this video, I will teach you how to tackle better in Roller Champions. I will be resuming Roller Champions streams really soon, so if you are interested in that, feel free to head down into the description. I'll leave my Twitch there. You can give it a follow, and when I go live, you will know. I also have two gameplay videos on this channel, so after this video, make sure to go ahead and try to give those a watch and see how all of the tips that I give in this video, I put in action. I think those two gameplay videos uh, do a great job at showing that, so if you're interested, definitely check them out. And they're gonna be up there, I think. Tackling is pretty hard in Roller Champions compared to mechanics like gaining speed, for example. It's something that will definitely need practice, but hopefully these tips will help you out. In Roller Champions, there are five different types of tackles. There's the regular tackle, which is just triggered by your tackle button. Then there's the extended tackle or dive tackle, which is triggered by pressing your tackle button twice in quick succession. Then there's the roundhouse kick, which triggers when you jump and hit your tackle button, or if you're just in the air and hit your tackle button. Then the uppercut is also a tackle, which is just triggered by your uppercut button. And the air diving tackle, also sometimes referred as the pencil, triggers when you're in the air and you double tap your tackle button. Well, there are five different types of tackles. The most important tackles that you should be utilizing is your regular tackle and the roundhouse tackle. Those two are the ones that I use the most and they are the most consistent for me. So now I'll explain which scenario you should be using every tackle in. The regular tackle is your best friend and it's great when paired with the break button. You can tackle, break, tackle, break and you'll see me in gameplay videos or on my Twitch stream do that a lot because it is really disorienting for the opposition and they think that you might have committed to a tackle but actually you hit the break button. So pairing a regular tackle with break in quick succession is your best friend when doing the regular tackle. This is the tackle that you're gonna want to perform the most because it's simple, easy, and does not disable your player for a certain amount of time. What I try to do with the regular tackle is I try to move backwards and let the ball carrier come towards me and then I'm gonna make a quick movement at him and try to predict where he's gonna be. A lot of tackling has to do with predicting where the ball carrier is going to be rather where they are right now. So make sure you start implementing a little bit of forward thinking when you're tackling using any type of tackle. The extended tackle or dive tackle, which is triggered by just double tapping your tackle button, should be probably used the least amount of times. This tackle disables your player for a good two to three seconds, and it takes you out of the action and the opposition can move really far away from you. The only times I use this tackle is when I'm in the bowl and I'm trying to predict a player, but most of the time if you're playing against good opposition, they're simply just going to jump over that diving tackle. So use this tackle very, very sparingly, and if you just need a little bit more reach on a slow moving player, sometimes that's a good tackle to pull off, but do avoid it in most situations. Another situation that is good for this is when the ball is loose and you need a quick reset, so you have to dive on the ball you can use the dive tackle to recover the ball and get a reset on the laps. The roundhouse tackle is really good, and when I say really good, it is amazing, both on the ground and on the wall. Using the roundhouse kick when someone is coming at you at high speeds is going to be the best time to use it. A lot of the time in high level gameplay, you'll see me do a roundhouse kick when the ball carrier is coming really fast at me and I don't have time to decide if I want to tackle right or left. So what I do is jump and tackle to trigger the roundhouse kick and I have a bigger tackle hitbox than a regular tackle. This tackle is especially useful in the bowl when there's a lot of movement and it could be a little bit unpredictable when people are using the ledge to jump. This is the best place to do it but also doing a head-on roundhouse is pretty good. Another good place to use the roundhouse kick is on the wall. When you're uppercutting into the wall, you can roundhouse and tackle someone mid-air, so make sure to try to utilize that when you're trying to shadow defend people that are really high on the wall. What I mean by shadow defending is you're trying to copy the ball carrier's movement when you're on defense, to try to predict where they're gonna be in a few seconds or even in one second. So make sure to start thinking like the ball carrier because that's gonna be your best friend when you can move backwards with the ball carrier and then make the right time to tackle that's gonna be the best time to perform any type of tackle the uppercut is another tackle 
tackle you should be using when the opposition is really high on the wall. This is because the uppercut is actually a tackle. A lot of people just use it to gain speed, but uppercutting up is actually gives you a tackle for a pretty long duration. So make sure you're using that when people are really high up on the wall and you try to predict where they are. That is going to be not as consistent, but you might as well be using it because you are using it to gain speed. So uppercut is one of those things that's pretty situational when maybe the ball is loose on the top somewhere and you kind of uppercut into it or there's a big mess of players you can uppercut up in the top, definitely be using that in that situation, but not all the time. The pencil or the air diving tackle is something that I, as a player, barely use. Now there are players like Mob Spy, for example, that are really good at the dive tackle, but it has very rare situations that you should be doing it. You should pencil tackle only in the beginning of the opposition's lap or in the very end when the ball carrier is about to make the shot. This is because the air tackle or the pencil actually disables your player also for about 2-3-4 to three to four seconds, like the dive tackle did, like I mentioned in the beginning. So realistically, if you're diving down the straight, not only are you going to be removed from the play for like 2-3 to three seconds, but also the opposition is just going to keep going forward and it becomes a 2v3 if not a 3v1. So using this tackle sparingly is going to help you out on defense. Now let's make a combo out of these tackles. A combo that I really like and you should start using for sure in your defensive play is tackle uppercut into a roundhouse. This is also used for gaining speed on defense as you can see on the screen. You can get really really high using the tackle uppercut into a roundhouse. It's a quick succession of button presses but it's very good and especially very good when tackling on the wall because you have three tackles in a very short amount of time. One tackle which is your regular tackle on the bottom of the wall, then your uppercut which is on the middle of the wall, and then a roundhouse kick to top it off which is going to be on the top of the wall. That is a killer combination, so definitely hop into a custom and try that one out. Like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure to use your break as a tool when you're on defense. It is so underrated, especially for new players, so make sure to start incorporating that when you need quick changes of direction. And this is really good on defense because the opposition might not expect you to really move quickly when you're on defense. They might expect a little bit like a like a U-shape, regular up and down the walls, up and down. But if you start using the break button, you can throw the ball carrier off really quickly and force them to make a mistake. And here is where a tip or a strategy comes into play when you're playing defense as a team. You really want to slow the game down. You want to make the opposition make mistakes. You don't really want to commit to too many tackles because if you commit really early, it's going to force you to have to rotate all the way around and you're already meeting them in front of the goal. So really be selective when you're committing to your tackles because committing too many times is going to leave you dispositioned and is going to cost you the goal. Saying to commit to less tackles might be a little bit counterintuitive when we're talking about defense, but that is going to be your best friend because you're going to want the opposition to make the mistakes for you and you're going to capitalize on them. You want them to lose some speed, you want them to try to go backwards. That's going to be the best thing to do when on defense. The ball carrier has the decisions and you as the tackler have to predict those decisions. And since the decisions can be forward, backward, pass, toss, whatever, committing to less of those those tackles is going to be the best option for you. And you really do that by utilizing the break button. If there's one thing to take out of this video, just start using the break button on defense. Whether that's up on the wall or just on the ground, use the break button. It's going to help you a ton. And if you miss a tackle, which is going to be inevitable, make sure to not chase him like a donkey and go and rotate around to meet him on the other side. Because most of the time, that's going to be the quickest play to do. I go over this in my rotation video, so if you want to have a look at that, go up in the top there and you can go watch that video there. And that's going to be it for this defensive guide on tackling. I really hope it helped and if you have some extra time, then do go and watch some of my gameplay videos, there's two of them, and try to see what I talked about in action. And I think you'll start to understand how I'm incorporating my own tips 
into my gameplay to slow the game down and to win possession to my team. With that being said, if you are interested in a six-man server and you're in NA, make sure to head down into the description. Uh, a few Roller Champions community members actually made a six-man Discord, so you can go ahead and check them out in the description. And if you're looking for a tournament Discord with a tournament that's happening, happening very soon, make sure to also join the Infinity Discord down below. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. The support has been unreal and hopefully these videos have been helpful. And if they are, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And now I'm gonna go and make more Roller Champions videos. And I need water. Oh my gosh, I talked for so long. Ah, bye.